So hello, um, I'm just getting myself ready. I've had a bit of a lazy one this morning. It's gone eight o'clock. It's about, well, it's 20 to nine. Um, I'm just putting my shoes on now. Outside is horrendous. It is um, extremely wet, very low cloud. Can't see anything anywhere. There's no views except for cloud. I'm still up in the Peak District, up on the high peaks, um, and I'm near Glossop again. In the last video, or in a previous video, I'll put a link up there for you, um, I went looking for a B-29 bomber that had crashed, and uh, there's another one close by. In fact, there's two up in this area. There's, there's one further over that way in the black something, and I'm not quite sure where that is, but I will actually research it when I get home. And there's another one in the opposite direction to where I went last night. It's on a trail, um, but it's off the beaten track. Now I've got a bit of a paper map um, to show me where the location was. And basically uh, on the 22nd of July in 1954, um, four RAF uh, cyber jets uh, from the 66 Squadron uh, were on exercises um, to do with simulating attacks from the Battle of the Soviet Bombers. So, uh, yeah, they were out flying around the countryside um, doing their manoeuvres and stuff like that. Um, they split up, from what I can gather, and they were the, the cyber jets were seen tearing above Kinder Reservoir. Uh, Kinder Reservoir is obviously quite low compared to where I am at the moment, so they were seen coming across Kinder Reservoir, uh, apparently unaware of the, the steep uh, rising plateau directly in front of them. So they were obviously seen coming across, flying across you know, the reservoir. They obviously come out the other side and as they've come out and they've just hit the um, hillside. Um, the impact point uh, is somewhere near the Black Ashup Moor. Um, you can walk along the Snake Pass. Um, you, can, you can get to it from there. But because I was here yesterday and last night, I thought I'd start from here. It's a bit of a longer walk. Now, I'm not going to be able to film much when I get out there because, honestly, honest to God, there is nothing to see. This is going to be quite another scary moment for me, quite a quite a one, because there's nothing, okay? I'll be walking on the moors on my own in this shroud of clag. There'll be nothing to see. Now, it's due to lift about one o'clock later on, um, so I've got quite some time to, to sort of ponder around. And I've got to go off the beaten path. I've got to go actually off the path to find this wreckage, if I can find it. So I'm not going to promise anything, and this video may never even see the light of day. But I'm here. Uh, it's a six-kilometer walk. I've got the OS map on my phone. Um, I've basically got to make sure it's downloaded before I go anywhere. So I've got the map on there. It's telling me it's a 6.5-kilometer walk, which is a good, what, probably four miles. Um, it's all moorland. It's relatively flat. There's not a lot to um, to, to deviate on height and stuff. Um, and there is a path. Okay, so there is a path across this moorland. It's a stone path from what I can see on Google Maps. And um, I'm basically going to stick to that. Stay on that path until I get across this moor. I've got to hang a left and another left. And then I'm going to get roughly to where the vicinity is. And I'm going to see what it looks like and see whether I've there's enough pathway or enough people that have gone to it to carve a pathway or to carve a route off the off the main track to the actual wreckage. Now it's not a big wreckage like the last one. Um, it's only a small wreckage, but it just gives me these these are the sort of things that I need to focus on to give me a reason to go off walking or to go off looking or or just something to do. So I found these and these are my incentive in my head to get myself going, to get myself out and to get myself looking. So uh, yeah, I'll take this bit of paper with me just in case I need it, because there's, there's a rough idea where it's landed, uh, where it crashed. Um, the, both the pilots died. I, from what I understand, one of the jets pulled up and they don't know, they, they have no idea uh, what happened on the crash. Um, but one of the pilots has obviously pulled up and because he was with his wingman, whether he's caught his wing and flipped them both, whether he got disturbed because of that, I don't know. Um, no one ever knows. No one ever found out what the reason was. Um, but both the guys died, obviously. So I am going to go looking for that. And um, yeah, wish me luck and come on with me. Let's go and see what we can do. This may be a complete and utter epic fail.
Okay, so we are off on this trail. You can see the fence disappearing behind me. This is one of those trails that's gonna be a long, long slog in the rain. So I'm gonna put on my waterproof. Well, I've got my waterproof on. I'm gonna put on my earphones and I'm just basically gonna keep walking and walking and walking. I just got talking to a guy, which is really, really good. He actually said the wreck is not too much off the beaten track and is relatively easy to find as long as I know where to look. And he's given me some directions and some ideas. But in front of me is complete bleakness, absolutely nothing apart from this stone path. And it just walks off into nowhere. It really is a scary kind of view and feeling to know that you're walking off into dangerous moorland, Ashup Moor, and you've got to stay on this pathway. He did say the path can be slippy in places, so I will just keep one eye on my feet. So, wish me luck. If I can find it, it will complete the story. But I've got, he reckons I'm gonna get so mind numbed by the time I get to the end of this path. So, it's gonna be one of them. Let's just get going. This looks like a really great place to get some very, um, minimalistic type photographs. I think what I'm actually gonna do to make it easier, and your mind plays tricks on you when you're looking into the distance, you can you think you can see things, but you can't, we well, can. I don't know if you can or you can't, but I'm just gonna take a few like phone photos because it's way too difficult to get the camera out in these conditions. But it's such a shame not to get some of these shots on on camera, so. I know these shots are only sort of JPEGs and they're sort of snaps, but you know that they're really, they're quite interesting. And yeah, I think the conditions really do set it off. So yeah, I'll put a few foam photographs up to keep you interested. So at least we've got something to keep us going, but this might make an interesting walk when it's not completely and utterly in a white out, fog out, mist out, whatever you want to call it. But by God, it's eerie. <sighs> eerie, eerie, eerie. And this path is going to go on for approximately, I don't know, three miles. Oh my God. Scary or what? I'm turned back. Uh, I was only about a quarter of the way down the path and I've just realized when I went back in to get my waterproofs on, I didn't lock the van. I was talking to the guy that was um, been wild camping and he's telling me where to go. And I put my waterproofs on and I know I haven't locked my van because my keys aren't zipped into my pocket. So I'm now on a rush back to the van. So this is going to have to hold, I think, for another day. I think I'm going to get back to the van and maybe bring Mrs. C another time and we'll go walking and looking for this wreck. So to be continued, or probably just cut to the next video, but I have got to get back to the van because I've left it unlocked and that is fatal. Oh God, what an idiot. It's all because I was distracted as well. What an idiot.
I'm back, I'm back, and uh, I've locked the van. Uh, I'm back in that same location as I was, uh, well, two minutes ago, 30 seconds ago, well, five seconds ago even. Um, I've come back out, this is the following week. It's a Saturday morning, it's about quarter to eight, eight o'clock-ish. I'm out with Mr. Chris Ball. Uh, I posted on Facebook yesterday, does anyone want to join me for a walk in the Peak District? Just because I was scared earlier on, you know, it was pretty scary and eerie coming across here. And I just thought the company to walk across this massive moorland um, would be nice. So he's come out and met us and uh, yeah we're pretty much not far from where i had to run back to the van and you know what from here i can still see the van it's over there last week or for you 30 seconds ago um you couldn't see your hand in front of your face so i'm back at this pool of water you've seen the shot i took on my phone and i've just taken another shot now with the camera and it's actually quite nice it's a really nice shot it's got a nice lead to it you've got the um the high shelf rocks in the background where that other the other wreck is that you've seen in the other video uh, if you haven't links going up in the corner um, so yeah it's a completely completely different place you can see for miles now you can see both directions you can see the path we've come on and over there i'm pretty sure that's kinder scout i didn't even know that was there last week and that waterfall that sort of flows upwards i think it's in that gap there i've never been there before but looking at the the hill line and the shape of it i think that's where it is so that's definitely one for another day um but yeah we're going to walk along here i've got the camera on my capture clip so i'm pretty much going to just snap a few of those shots i took on my phone uh, last week for you a few seconds ago um and even here you know just trying to make sure we don't sink but even here this little leading line just there is quite nice so i might just take a couple because uh one my van's in the background and I think it looks pretty cool. And uh, two, why not? Stop for another couple of minutes to have a bit of a look here. The, the, the terrain's changed a little bit now and it's, there's a little few patches of heather which is quite nice in the colours and the path is leading all the way through this bit here but it's, it's not, it's got, I know none of it's flat as such but it's got that unflat look to it. It's very up and down, very undulating and you know you've got all these gaps in between the peat and stuff like that so it looks really different you can see the like, peat bog over there which you really wouldn't want to step in. even down here next to the path you wouldn't be stepping in this because there's no telling how deep it is um you can see the light now coming across over the back there i'm not actually sure i've just looked on the os map i'm not actually sure whether that's kinder scout but it's definitely going that direction it, it could possibly be further around to the next ridge i'm not quite 100 percent sure but there's something up on the top of the hillside over there as well so when we get closer because we are only halfway we're halfway now across this pathway i can still see the van right back over in the distance i can see the high shelf where i was before um, you can see down into gloss up from here and everything so today is a completely different story really is but this path looks fantastic so i think the best thing i can do is get the drone out and keep walking We have been walking, it seems like, forever and ever. Remember that guy I said I spoke to? Um, he said, you're gonna get really fed up with a walk. My God, this goes on and on and on. But I'm so pleased that Chris is with us because we've just been talking. So we haven't really been thinking about where our feet are going and what we're doing. And uh, the views around are absolutely stunning. You can see for miles and miles. And from where we are now, actually, because we're on a raised bank, if you look back, you can see it just goes on and on and on and on and on. And you can't see the van anymore because it's now further down over in the dip, but you can, you can see, is that Manchester? Yeah, Oldham, I think. Manchester. Oldham, right over there in the distance. It's, I know it's bright on the screen, you can't see it, but you can see a long way that way and 
all down the snake pass is going down this way that'll be leading you down to lady Bird down there now there's some clouds coming which is amazing because i really was hoping for something other than just a blue sky but we are plodding on and keep going and going and going and i'm gonna have a look on me os in fact i'll have a look now and i'll tell you roughly how far we are now we're coming up this slight incline i'll give you a bit of a insight and this video may turn into a long one you know what it is it's me in it nothing's ever a five minute video let's just see let's tap this with my finger bring me os map back up oh i don't want facebook not out here anyway right so let's have a look see where it comes up oh 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 we're nearly there we're nearly there so i'm assuming just over the brow of this hill and we'll have a decision to go left or right so yeah stand by we could be there well we are up on the top with the first can and that guy remember that guy telling me you pass the first can you go down to the next one so we've got a little bit further to go down a bit uh, it's got to be probably around the back of this bit um, but it gives you a bit of a scale to where these guys were flying because they came over Kinder Reservoir, which is going to be down in that valley. Uh, they must have come across, we could even be in the next little valley, come across, got into trouble on, I think, that high ridge over there. And then they've obviously crash landed one at the bottom of this side. And I think there was, there's two sites, uh, there's definitely two sites since I got back last week and done some Googling. Um, I think the other one has landed on the back of this one, which I'm going to try to get to if we can. Uh, there's no actual defined path as such i don't think we'll see um but i've got the drone nevertheless but yeah what a fantastic view it really is pretty amazing it goes all the way around everywhere as far as you can see and in all fairness i don't like these sunny days perfect weather to do this not that i was in earlier on right so we have come to a marker point that's got uh, hayfield this direction where we're going uh edale up that way and i don't know what's down this way what we got down this way uh bleak uh, bleak low which we just come from and then you got oh the snake in down that end um so yeah that's your four points in this post we're gonna have a look down here because as far as i know on my uh, little map the guy told me he said to get to the can it's not really a can it's a marker point he said but you definitely get to a crossroads and he said it's just off to the right so we're gonna have a little look down this path here and see now we've just been talking to some other guys and he said if we go up here he said there's a like a funny shaped rock a big boulder he said if you get to that you walk off the path and you can see a little bit of the wreckage he said but the wreckage is gradually disappearing because it's sinking into the bog um he was up there many years ago so but there's not a lot left so we might go up there we'll see how see how the legs feel but yeah apparently we're here we just need to find it which is going to be the drawn out video to watch right we're not in the right place so when we last spoke to you when we were at that can and we said we've got to go down we didn't I should have stuck to me guns and looked at me OS map and said yes, but it's just the fact that we had to go off the path-ish. So we're going to go back there, but first of all, because we've come down a little way, we're going to head up there. One, because we're here, and we might as well, and you get a good view. Um, but the other wreck's somewhere over there. Now, even if I get a bit closer and fly the drone, but at least we'll have a go. We're going to see if we can find just a remnant, um, and then we'll make our way back to the other one, which I've now found on Google Maps. So we should be fine so wish us luck because it's now going to get uphill and sweaty this is really steep this really does pretty much go virtually straight up but it's only a short one it's not like climbing everest so we're just taking our time do a little bit short burst have a break let your legs catch up let your heart rate catch up and uh, keep going but yeah definitely one of the steepest pathways i've seen ever probably sometimes worry about my videos being too long and i know i've got a lot of followers that say they really like the longer videos but sometimes as well i just cannot make them any shorter because i want to show you this view now on the path where we've come from we've come over the top of this hill and that's where we've got to go back to see the wreck it's just literally just over there um, so we need to get to that cairn and come back but the view going back over the moors over that lay there and look at the view this direction you've got kinder reservoir that's looking really sorry for itself at the moment I've just taken a snapshot of this um, because I like the light on the land and the way it just drops down into the valley. And you can see I've got the sun on my face. It's a really, really nice day. I'm sweating because I've just come up, my, come up this hill, but it's a gorgeous day and you can see the shadows on the hillside there. It just looks amazing. We've got these lovely big fluffy clouds making these nice dappled light across the countryside. But you can see for miles and miles and miles. It's amazing. And we're not even at the top yet. So we've 
we've come up onto the top of this ridge line and this is starting to change a bit now we've got some rocks you can see over my shoulder there up there and uh, we're definitely now up on the top looking down and over so if anything else we've had a good walk and we've seen something nice and the views up here are spectacular and it is it's changed slightly now because it's a very sort of like a rocky path and stuff like that but that little slope was extremely steep it really was now i'm, I'm gonna have to get me googles out again and try and get a pinpoint to roughly where this uh, wreckage will be if it's here well it is here it's just what's left because we don't want to endlessly walk miles because we'll end up in another town and both of our cars are about three and a half miles back that direction so let's get an idea because it could be over near them rocks and down or it could be over near them rocks and down or it could be here and down so i just need to work out where it is as soon as i found it i may get there and then check in to make instead of making this video too long for you Aren't these rocks fascinating with these cutouts where you can, uh, where the stones have been rolling around? This is the perfect bench, isn't it? How cool is this? What a view to have me banana. Fantastic. Would you like to have a go on my throne, sir? Oh, yeah, it's good, isn't it? It's on top of the world here. Oh. Amazing. Amazing. But we do need to find this wreck. Okay, so we've we just had our lunch on the rocks over there. We've walked across this uh, peat field a bit. Come over this stile. And as soon as we come over the stile, apart from this squidgy bit in front of me, this is a piece of wreckage. Now this wasn't the piece I was looking for on the map, but it's definitely a piece of wreckage. You can see here. I know it's nothing fancy to look at, but it's the start of um, what we came to find, to be honest. So it's it's a little bit of something. It's aluminium and uh, I think that's a fuel tank. Fuel tank. See, this, this is the perfect person, actually. The absolute perfect... I couldn't have asked for anybody better to join me. This guy has been in the RAF. He's flown with the um, Red Arrows and stuff like that. He knows his stuff about aviation. So it's absolutely um, brilliant because he'd be able to name things. And if it is a bit of a fuel tank, I would never have known that. So, uh, yeah, pretty amazing. There's a little cross down here as well, lest we forget 2021. So obviously someone's been down here. So we've got to go sort of across this so i'm only going to go as far as what we feel comfortable this is a joint thing as far as we feel comfortable in traveling across this because there's no actual marked path i'm following guidance on the google maps so um we'll have a look and see what we do but we've actually come across a bit but it's just not anywhere chance and hell of a photo of that um in fact i will take one on a snapshot just because it's going to show on my phone it will show us how high we are but um yeah, at least, at least we're coming to find what it is we're coming to find now. Just wanted to show you this little piece here, because um, I've just turned it over to have a look at it, and you can still see the actual colour, um, the pale grey, and there's some writing on it as well, which is very, very impressive. Um, and amazing to see as well. It's, uh, it's quite something you think. This is probably one of the first impact points coming in off over the top of this hill because they did come over the reservoir, which is behind me. So there's a good possibility the guy died pretty much around this spot. Um, but let's see if we can find the rest, see if we can find a bit more and show you. And we can see the vehicles from here right over in the distance, an awful long way away. So it hasn't been two moments since I spoke to you. You can see where Chris is. That's where we just were over there. You, can, you might just be able to see that shiny bit. And I just looked on Google Earth. And if you get onto Google Earth, and I'll, I'll put a screenshot up to show you where we are. If, if you go on Google Earth, you can zoom in and you can just see like little maybe white stones or white shiny parts actually on the Google Maps. And I thought, oh, there's a bit just over the other side of the fence. So I just said to Chris, I'm going to run over to Star and have a look. And yes, there are more remnants of... Um, this jet plane um, again this is all storytelling let's see Chris being ex-RAF 
he, you know, he, he's, he's saluted the guys, um, and I think that's really honourable. But he can probably tell what some of these parts are as well by what the bit comes underneath, you know, and stuff is. Obviously, this has got a shape to it. Uh, there's a ridge in between, sort of where maybe a wing had sat into and stuff. So it really does start to add up. And from where I'm standing as well, this this bank, because it's in a dip, as you can see here, because it's in a dip, I can see a little bit more down there. So I think we're going to check this little area out first and then we'll try and walk down and find the bigger parts up that end, but um, very interesting. Can you tell what that is? Um, ailerons. Ailerons? Oh yeah, because that would have been the bit that would have been connected to the plane, wouldn't it? The hinges, yeah. So they are the ailerons, which is the bits for steering on the back of the wings, or possibly the front of the wing, because it may have been connected to that, um, and give you that tilt to, to, to give you the lift and to, to basically steer, really. Um, but yes, really interesting and uh, nice to share it with someone this, this week. I was very lonely last week. Uh, not fired up, which is that magazine. Yeah. No, no, we've not seen anything, is there? but come in anyway. <laughs> Here's another piece. There's another piece, yeah. Um, well, even that, you know, to do them rivets, all hand rivets. Yeah, hand yeah, riveted. yeah. Back in the 40s. Yeah. All in the beam saw that is quite a big chunk, but how light that is. Oh, that's so light! Yeah, and there's another bit of that rubber. Yeah, from like a fuel tank, possibly. Yeah, that's a, that's a composite. Isn't it? That's the only thing I can think that is with the rubber yeah. seals. Yeah, it could well be. That could have been a patch. Yeah, it's all strewn. Yeah, it's, it? yeah, it's bits. It's all down here. Yeah. I'd say it's spread out a lot when you think, yeah. you know, the, the the distance between it all. There's a bit of uh, cable there. Cable shrouding. Yeah, whereas everything else would have been burnt, I would have thought. Yeah, yeah. But then. If it's broken up, watch parts are on fire. That's yeah. that's the other side of it. It's, there was a bit down here. Let's have a quick look down here. There's another piece of that matting rubber. It is, it's spread out everywhere. There's bits down here. No, it's not. But the dips, yeah, it's, that's... In fact, there might be some more down on this path. Let's have a look. That's a bit of it is chunky, yeah. That is solid. It's got big um, like bolts on it. That yeah. feels quite heavy, that does. does yeah and basically we've just got to follow this straight line haven't we really more of that matting and the difference in that shiny yeah. shiny aluminium more of the outer skin yeah I'm not sure whether this uh He's boring you a little bit now, but we're still finding parts. This is obviously a big pile of bits and pieces. Um, that's obviously melted and it's quite heavy. But this is obviously a pile that people have been putting, you know, putting parts in. That's very much a like a wing or something, that one, because it's very thin, like a almost a wing tip, and it's round as well. You can see there how, how rounded it is at the front, which is for uh, aerodynamics, and it's thin, so that would have been the end of like a, probably a wing tip. Um, it just, it is very interesting. There's some more, more numbers on this piece down here. 
Um, some of it's really shiny, some of it not so much. But it's just, it is, it's fascinating, really fascinating to see. Um, there's a couple of little crosses down here as well for people, lest we forget again, remembrance. So yeah, it's nice. Uh, nice to see people are leaving respects. And you wouldn't come across this, you've got to come off. We're now literally on the moor and we're going to make sure we keep our eye on the, the, the rocks and we get an idea. We know where we are, it's daylight, it's clear, we we're not going to get lost. Um, but yeah, we're now just following basically a straight line down here and see if we can come to... Um, it'd be nice to see the engine if it's still around. I think it is, I've seen Google images of it, but it's just whether it's still there or whether it's sunk into the bog. So. Um, yeah, if you're still with me, thank you for staying with me. There's still a lot more to come. And if it gets too long, I'll split the video into two and make a two-parter. But yeah, fascinating, fascinating. It really is. Circular. That's really heavy as well, yeah. though. You wonder if that went round the engine, because there's connections here. Oh, would that be like a protection sort of? I'm, I'm wondering that, yeah. Yeah. Cowling round it. But that's definitely a wing tip or something, though, yeah, isn't it? It's the uh, aileron. The aileron on, on the end. There's yeah. another one there, actually. Yeah. And then they've got these that's a really pipes, that's yeah. a really thin one there yeah. and the connection to it it's amazing you've still got the paint on as well and then you've got these pressure pipes here There's some cable in there more rubber God, it there. Yeah. it's uh you know what, the connections where yeah that the, one is uh, yeah electrics, yeah. yeah the little rubber ties yeah. and again that's another these are all these are this is all wings isn't it this is all wing tips now yeah. it's just insane absolutely insane Whew. So we found the wreckage. Um, I had the drone out before and um, flew it over and I flew it right down. That is 500 meters away, roughly. Um, I'm not sure if you can see it down there in the shiny, but if you look, follow the shiny line, I'll, I'll do a bit of video overlay for you. It is down there and I think the engine's down there. It'd be nice to see. Now, if we go down that way, there's a bit of a track of a trail. We can then carry on over the other side and back along the trail, back up to the other part, or, we're going to have to cut across country and walk back through like a little trail through the middle. And there is a little path, I can see like a sheep track that sort of follows a line. So there is a bit of a way down. I mean, there's a stile down on the fence as well. So it obviously means you can get down there. It's just, um, let's say 500 meters there and then we've got to walk back. So we're just going to have another little quick conversation over it. I'm keen on doing it. And as long as Chris is, because he's got a bit of a bad hip. If he's, yeah, yeah, no problem. If he's keen, you're, going to, you're up for it. Yeah, yeah. He wants to do it. He wants to do it. That's what it's all about going out of other people. Because if I was here on my own, I'd be like, I ain't going down there. But because it's someone else, we talked ourselves into it. So uh, I will switch you back on down the bottom there. Um, we'll concentrate on our feet and where we're going. And um, yeah, there's definitely a, another photograph of some more wreckage when we get there. So uh, stand by. Probably could almost be for part two. And if it is part two, don't forget to give us a thumbs up, like and subscribe, and uh, you've got to stay tuned to the next one. So hit that notification bell in that bottom corner and you'll see when the video is uploaded. Uh, probably Wednesday or Sunday, depending on when this one goes out, the opposite day. So yeah, see you in part two.